Hello, welcome to this introductory journey on uh, polymers. Uh, we are uh, looking at processing and recycling uh, over uh, quite a few set of lectures. Uh, in uh, this lecture, we will look at uh, processes in which uh, cross-linking is involved and uh, we know for example thermosets and rubbers are uh, materials which are processed uh, and during this processing cross-linking is important. So keeping some applications in mind, uh, we will discuss uh, some aspects of uh, which type of cross-linkers are used for what type of uh, materials and then importantly uh, for processing what is the amount of cross-linking because cross-linking uh, makes the material undergo a, sol a liquid to solid transition or gelation. And so uh, all the shaping operations have to finish before uh, that extent of cross-linking is reached at which gel point is observed. So therefore extent of cross-linking is an important variable for us to know. So cross-linkers are different uh, depending on the different polymeric uh, systems. Of course for uh, step growth polymerization we have one class and uh, chain growth polymerization given the mechanism itself is different. And so, for example, Resol uh, uh, is cross-linked using just uh, thermal uh, cross-linking. On the other hand, there are several resins such as uh, urea formaldehyde or Novolac or epoxies uh, which can be cross-linked using amine. And uh, an amine can also uh, have uh, multiple uh, groups. So tetraamine or triamine and each amine group NH2 can react twice. So therefore, many of these groups can, requ can uh, re uh, react uh, four times and uh, uh, additional times and so they are a very effective cross-linking agent because as we know more the functionality of a cross-linker more chains it can link. For polybutadiene for example, uh, butyl lithium is used and, and polyethylene which is cross-linked uh, for uh, several applications. Uh, either uh, for uh, storage tanks uh, or also for wire insulations. Uh, the cross-linking can be carried out either by chemical means such as use of a peroxide or uh, even thermal or radiative uh, means are possible. So in this uh, exam question, uh, in fact uh, the question is related to you know what are the additives and uh, what is it used for. So of course as uh, we are uh, seeing uh, the dicumol peroxide is an uh, curing agent. And curing is a word uh, practitioners used to again imply that uh, the transition is happening from a liquid like resin and it is getting cured and finally solidified to get the final product. So you can uh, look at uh, some of the other uh, materials which are used for uh, mainly cross link systems. So if you have uh, a step growth polymerization reactions then we need uh, basically a multifunctional uh, cross linker. And uh, this could for example be a, an alcoholic group if let us say it is reacting with uh, a carbolic carboxylic acid to form uh, polyester. If you have a linear uh, or only difunctional uh, hydroxyl group then you will get a linear chain. So therefore, uh, a big requirement in terms of getting a cross-linked polymer is that the functionality of the monomer has to be more than 2 and uh, this for example the functionality is 3 while these are all with functionality 2. And uh, given uh, the monomer mixture and uh, given that the functionality is more than 2 then we can have the extent of reaction how many of these uh, carboxylic acid and hydroxyl groups have reacted will tell us uh, what is the overall uh, uh, cross-linking that is reached. So for example, uh, this uh, is the extent of uh, reaction to achieve gel point or getting a 3D network of macromolecules. So if let us say functionality is 2, so if this number is 2 then we can see that uh, P has to go to 1 and that is basically saying that if all the monomers combine together in one macromolecule then we will have uh, basically a continuously joined macromolecule and that uh, is really a trivial case and it is not uh, ever going to be achieved. So but what we do is uh, we uh, put in uh, monomers which have much higher cross linking. 
So, for example, if f m bar is let us say 3, then you can see that uh, when n goes to infinity, we will have uh, basically p going to 2 by 3. So, around 66 percent of uh, extent of reaction, we can get uh, the overall uh, gelation. So, you can see that as you increase the functionality, the extent of reaction required for cross-linking is less. And uh, generally, the cross-link uh, amount can also be estimated. This exam question, for example, is, is uh, looking at uh, the cross-link in case of vulcanization of uh, natural rubber and uh, where, uh, in fact, each cross-link contains certain number of sulfur at, uh, atoms. And uh, so, if uh, the percentage of uh, isoprene units which are cross-linked is known, what is the weight percent of sulfur that has to be added. So, given in case of cross-linking, we always need to add a cross-linker which is either a higher functionality uh, monomer or a cross-linker which can link uh, different chains. We need to basically estimate the amounts. So, you can look through this question and try to answer the uh, overall amount of sulfur required. In case of cross-linking of rubbers, uh, since uh, we need to finish the shaping operations before uh, the uh, overall uh, gelation sets in or three-dimensional network is formed, uh, we have several industrial instruments which are quite commonly used. For example, it is called oscillatory disc rheometer or uh, moving die rheometers. Uh, these uh, try to estimate the overall amount of torque which is required for moving. Uh, in this case, uh, it is a disc and this disc is oscillating and then uh, the uh, rubber material is kept. Or uh, we can have a die, uh, so there is an upper die and then there is a lower die and uh, in between the fluid is uh, kept, which is in this case rubber. And then uh, uh, one of them is uh, oscillating uh, lower die is uh, moving and then therefore, what is the amount of torque which is required to make it move. And initially, when the uh, rubber uh, molecules are uh, smaller molecular weight, the torque required is less, but as cross-linking starts happening, the molar mass builds up and the overall torque required to make this uh, motion also increases. And so, that is what you would see generally when you look at uh, torque as a function of time in uh, one of these uh, instruments. Uh, compared to the rheometers, uh, which are generic and used in case of uh, uh, analysis of rheological response, these are more trade tests. So, they are very useful in terms of processing of rubbers and uh, numbers that are produced in these are very uh, important in terms of making decisions, quick decisions uh, in rubber processing industry. However, these cannot be used for any class of materials to just measure a viscosity. So, there is an important uh, 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 word we will see, uh, which is related to metry, which is the measurement. So, viscometry implies measurement of viscosity and generally for uh, rheology, we have what are called viscometric flows. And uh, these viscometric flows will make the rheometers uh, useful for large class of material systems, because then the nature of material does not determine the theory which is underlying the analysis of viscometric flows. In uh, oscillating disc rheometer or moving die rheometer on the other hand, uh, the nature of materials is interwoven together with uh, whatever are the numbers that are being generated. So, these are trade tests as opposed to a generic instrument which can analyze flow behavior of large class of materials. However, from a practical point of view, uh, the data that is uh, generated in terms of torque versus time is very useful in terms of decision making. And so, generally you can see that initially the torque would uh, remain constant or decrease uh, as uh, temperature is changing and then uh, curing or cross-linking starts occurring. And then uh, the expectation is that beyond a certain point when cross-linking is complete, uh, the overall torque required does not change much with time. But depending on uh, what is going on in the sample, there could be uh, additional cross-linking which is not desired or there could also be degradation uh, due to the thermal uh, energy and uh, temperatures which are involved. So, therefore, such a set of data is useful in terms of deciding the molding conditions and deciding the overall uh, 
temperature and pressure which are to be utilized for several processing operations related to rubbers. So, the other uh, uh, measurement of uh, gelation uh, that can be done on a overall uh, rheometer itself, a generic rheometer is basically measurement of uh, dynamic properties with time. So, given that uh, material becomes more and more viscoelastic when gelation happens, we start with a monomer uh, solution or we start with a resin which is completely Newtonian fluid and then with cross-linking it transforms into more elastic cross-linked network. And so, this viscoelasticity increases or elasticity increases as gelation happens and that can be analyzed by looking at uh, G prime and uh, G double prime. So, we could uh, look at uh, the uh, variation of uh, what happens to G double prime and uh, what happens to G prime. And so, as uh, macromolecular molar mass builds up with cross linking, both of them increase. Uh, however, the G prime which indicates the elasticity or the storage modulus that increases much more rapidly. And uh, you can see that there is a certain point uh, at a certain time we can see that the elastic behavior starts dominating with respect to the viscous behavior. When we have the monomer stage or sol state, in the sol state we have uh, the uh, viscous behavior dominating, while in the gel state we have the elastic behavior dominating. So, therefore, uh, material transforms uh, from being a largely viscous material to a largely elastic material. The, uh, so, we could uh, this crossover, so many times uh, you would uh, hear people talk about uh, crossover where G prime crosses over G double prime can be used as, as an indication of gelation. Because whenever there is a three dimensional network formed, the elasticity of the network uh, kicks in and therefore, G prime is more than the G double prime. However, uh, if you remember G double prime uh, and G prime are both functions of uh, frequency. So, uh, in effect uh, this uh, crossover will also depend on frequency itself and if it is a fundamental property of the reactants which are reacting to form this three dimensional network, then the gel time should not depend on the measurement condition which in this case happens to be frequency. So, to uh, uh, evaluate the gel time in a cross link system, there is a winter chamber criteria which states that tan delta is independent of frequency at the gel time. And uh, so, if you uh, do the same set of experiments, but rather than looking at uh, G prime and G double prime individually, uh, what you could do is you can look at tan delta which is nothing but ratio of G double prime to G prime. And so, initially of course, uh, tan delta is high because uh, G double prime uh, dominates. So, since we have G double prime higher than G prime, uh, we have tan delta very high and later on what happens is G prime uh, dominates over G double prime. So, tan delta is decreased. So, generally uh, there is a decreasing tendency and this is again used uh, expected because uh, as uh, cross linking happens, molar mass builds up and elasticity increases, storage capability increases, the dissipation capability comes down. Now, if we do this uh, tan delta measurement at different frequencies instead of a single frequency the way it is uh, done here, uh, we can plot all tan delta versus frequency and what we will see is at one frequency the tan delta is independent of frequency and this is the gel time. Therefore, in this overall uh, transition what we see is there is a viscous liquid uh, for which relaxation time is very low or uh, practically 0. Then we have a viscoelastic liquid for which relaxation times are small, so that dissipation still dominates, but there is some amount of elasticity to a viscoelastic solid where there is at least one relaxation time which is infinite. And that relaxation time is associated with the cross linked network. Given that we have uh, basically three dimensional spanning network, though there are some smaller uh, sols still remaining in the material. So, this uh, relaxation time diverging uh, is an indication of the gel time and that is why at that point uh, there is a percolated network formed and then uh, winter chamber theoretically showed that uh, therefore, gel time will be independent of frequency because G prime will be 
a function of frequency and uh, g double prime will be also same function of frequency. So, when you take their ratio, the frequency dependence will fall out and therefore, the ratio is independent of frequency at the gel time. So, this kind of measurements are useful uh, to determine the gel time in case of uh, cross link systems. Uh, we, the questions that we discussed uh, were related to uh, what are the different additives and uh, for example, zinc oxide uh, is used for vulcanization as an activator and uh, also depending on the uh, process involved, we could use uh, an additive to decrease the viscosity for ease of uh, processing and mixing. Uh, it is also called mastication or uh, peptizing action which leads to chain scission and therefore, reduction in molar mass. And so, uh, different additives are added in our overall rubber formulation depending on the requirement. And the other question which was related to the sulfur and isoprene crosslink is just dependent on you know what is the number of group. It is basically accounting of how many sulfur atoms are there and how many groups of isoprene is there. So, you can uh, look at this and uh, arrive at the answer. So, with this we will close the lecture and discussion on cross linking. Thank you.